background in sales um, really kind of came in handy and to kind of make sense of what's happening out there and to make it actionable for folks like you. Uh, before that, though, I sold real estate in Minnesota. I was in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. I sold real estate at a high level there. And before that, I sold real estate in Alaska, Washington State, and California. I've been in this business uh, since the MLS book was a thing. Um, uh, sold a lot of real estate when the MLS went online. And uh, when it became my job to watch about watch what's happening in the real estate world, uh, I really embraced that and tried to make it a, a, a actionable for you. Uh, my wife is a is the realtor in the family now, and she is in her seventh year in the business. And uh, she went from zero sales to uh, top 10% Chicago realtor inside of a year, and then a top 1% uh, Chicago agent uh, since then. This year is her best year ever, and she spent half of her half of her half of her year essentially uh, on the couch, not being able to do anything. And uh, a couple of months with the, the zero ability to do any business. And she learned a lot about, about real estate then. And I was uh, thankfully almost kind of unemployed between then and now because I couldn't start this job uh, four or five months ago. Um, and watching how agents like her adapted to this new um, environment of real estate was probably one of the most fascinating things that I had ever seen. And it's some of the things that we'll talk about today. Um, adapting to the changing environment of real estate, um, guys, will never end. And if I can tell you one thing today, it's to constantly disrupt yourself and your business as much as you can. Um, it doesn't matter how big or small you are in terms of your brokerage size, your team size, your, your agent count. It's the quality of, of the experiences that you're putting out there. It's the quality of the content and the marketing that you're putting out there right now for consumers who are really confused and need guidance. Um, and it really is about doing the things that your clients need and don't know they need now before they even reach out to you. Um, and, and that is probably some of the few things that make it really tough about adapting to real estate right now. Um, it, embrace the fact guys that you're no longer in the driver's seat when it comes to much of this. And if, if we could kind of work together both uh, as brokers and as uh, broker owners, as agents, association people, um, highlighting the the value of people in a people business constantly over and over again, we're going to win. I, I, I for one, I'm really tired of hearing about Zillow, uh, you know, disruption, all these things, all these buzzwords that are out there that make you want to spend thousands of dollars to go to the other side of the country to listen to people who've never sold real estate tell you how to how to sell real estate. Real estate is still local. The access to it now it has become global, uh, specifically for your market and my market. Um, so embrace that. Now is the time to do things differently. Now is the time to be in front of change. Now is the time to be a champion of people in a people business. Um, and what we can do to adapt to these new ideas of real estate integrated into the old school, we're gonna win, okay? So, um, you know, I think because it's, this is a webinar, um, I'm going to hold all the questions to the end. If you want to use the Q&A chat box up top or, or actually put it in the chat, any questions, I'm happy to answer at the end. I've got plenty of time after this to, uh, uh, to answer any questions. I got a 10 o'clock meeting today and that's it. So, um, you know, let's, let's, let's just dive into it. If you guys are really cool with that. So, you know, I really want to talk right now about, um, why the industry is changing and, and it's got really nothing to do with us, you know, consumers are changing uh, every industry out there. If you look at the, at the simple things like the S&P 500 and the, and, and the stock market, there are companies now that, that exist that didn't exist 10 years ago that are making tons of money and are showing value in a time where value proposition is, is not what you think your value proposition is, it's what I think your value prop proposition is as a consumer. So. When we're, when we're talking about why consumers are changing real estate, just look no further than the last couple of months in COVID, right? So here in Denver, they for about three months could do zero business. The real estate industry stopped. And what was interesting was seeing agents, brokerage, broker owners, and consumers all adapt to this kind of new change, right? Um, elsewhere in other parts of the country, um, you're seeing kind of the same change affect everybody. 
Uh, and when we, when we think about um, what is changing the industry, I think less about brands and think more about the concepts behind why the brands are working. And that's kind of the gist of what we'll, we'll be hitting on, especially early on in this, in this presentation. But more than anything, we're no longer in the driver's seat. Let's embrace that. And let's start thinking about who the true change agents are in, in this industry, especially in the, over the last three, four months with, as we've been quarantining. And some of you guys, who, you, know, you know, Chanel's on this and hello, uh, good to see you. Uh, you know, you've heard me talk about these brands and while these brands were verbs, uh, not nouns, before quarantine, they even became more so now. So, you know, when you're looking at these brands, think less about the logo, think less about um, you know, where they're based, think about more about what they do and why they do it, right? So when I look at Apple, for example, Apple has really kind of led the, led the way of, of a premium, at least in my mind, a premium service in a time when, let's see, we got anything on the chat here, um, in, in a time when uh, brands really kind of started to get watered down. Premium service. Now, think about your services that you're offering to your clients. Do they think it's premium? You got to understand, guys, real estate is a premium service. People spend a lot of money on it. And, and even now, people will spend more money on things that they value, which has been an interesting thing. Guys, we, we're in an age of $1,000 cell phones, which, if you think about it, is, is fascinating. Not only are $1,000 cell phones, but folks are willing to give those things up every other year to get the next thousand dollar cell phone. You know, here in Denver, thousand bucks, that's earnest money on a, on a, on a, on a $800,000 house. Thousand dollars is something right now that people are just throwing away, but if they see value in it, they're gonna spend it over and over again, right? Think about the fact that Apple has people lining up for their services, lining up. There are people lining up right now for a phone that hasn't been, hasn't been released yet. I went to the, um, Yesterday, I went to the Apple store here at Cherry Creek in Denver to go pick up uh, these uh, AirPod Pros. And I gotta tell you, the line was out the door to just to get in to look at computers in a time when we have a global pandemic happening. What I think is also awesome about Apple is that the, this company pivoted. And the art of the pivot is something that we'll all have to learn and adapt to right now. Change is incremental, change is small, and for us as, as broker owners and, and as agents, it's going to change incrementally every year. Keep in mind, guys, when I was a kid, 90, uh, sophomore in high school, 98, 99, 2000, right? Um, Apple was circling the drain. Y'all remember that? Apple was circling the drain. Microsoft had to prop them up because if Apple went, uh, went bankrupt, Microsoft would have a complete authority over the industry, right? When's the last time any of you guys use Microsoft products? You know, think about that. This company pivoted and pivoted and pivoted every year. What I also love about Apple is that very seldom do you see them marketing themselves, right? Their marketing campaigns are simple. They are uh, compelling. Uh, they show off their product. But most, most of the marketing is done by rabid, crazy Apple fans who are making you spend $2,000 on a computer. You know, I've got... I got this guy that I'm using right now, which is my, my MacBook Pro. I've got a Dell computer sitting next to it that I use in my office. They do the exact same thing, except for my Dell was $500. This is 2000, that's the exact same thing, right? So the, the perception, reality, Apple's changed that. They pivoted, they persevered through, uh, through crazy times. Embrace that. You know, Google's the number one real estate search website in the world. You know, and here's where, you know, I, I I gotta be truthful about this. I couldn't say this at any I'm gonna say this to you now. You know, we have lost real estate search. We, we, as an industry, you know, and we can sit there and hem and haw about what happened and what it didn't happen in 1998 when RIN was a thing, 2005 when everything went online, right? So um, you, you guys gotta understand that I can Google, believe me, it's not, it's not about searching anymore. It's about Googling every house in the country, every house in the country, and I see what I think is important. And that is where you know, search can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, you know, what I think is important is what I'm going to preoccupy myself with and then engage with you with, which is why we have so much problems as an industry, getting people to wean themselves off of Google. That's going to be a challenge and a continued challenge going forward. But 
you know what at the very least guys what you can do is when i google you i can see what you stand for and i can see your content strategy and i can see your systems and processes that make me want to use you as my agent use you as my brand to represent me and my buy sale experience at the end of the day guys google's a verb there are no, more searches that happen on google uh, every minute than happen on our brokerage websites let's embrace that let's start with what we can own which is local real estate, which is uh, neighborhood real estate, which is niche real estate. It's, it's getting me to move to you because that's gonna happen more and more, especially now, you know, you got the, 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 court, the medical corridor there that's forever going to be a, a, um, a funnel for, for y'all as, as, as broker owners and as agents. When I Google you and your brand, when I Google Rally Real Estate, do I see what makes me want to use you with your brand flying there? Think about that. The other thing too, we got to think about too, uh, as well as broker owners is, do I see your agents? I'm going to use your agent at some point. And the biggest problem, the number one problem, so we're talking realtor.com, Zillow, and all those guys, is that I can't see any of your agents and why I want to use them. Why would I trust them? I trust your brand, but what about them? Because these are, these are the people that I'm going to be in the car with. This is, the, this is a number one issue that, that almost every portal is dealing with right now, which is why you're seeing uh, these big companies pivot. We'll talk about that in a minute. Zappos is powered by service, guys. It's right there on their logo. They are clear, simple, and obvious about what they are bringing to you and setting expectations for you as a consumer with me as a brand. What are you powered by? Zappos can sell anything now, guys. And frankly, they have. They've bought by Amazon, Amazon right next to it. Amazon, guys, has made billions over the last four months. And there's a reason why. Because I trust it, I can get everything I need there, and it can get delivered to me right now. I can buy everything from A to Z. That's what that logo means, guys. It, it, literally, there are a generation of children that are going to grow up and Google Amazon and see a really crappy looking website rather than a river. And that, to me, is fascinating. I think the thing about, um, you know, if you look at any of these brands, pr probably the Amazon way of thinking is the best way, it's the best one to integrate into your business processes right now. I use you as a brokerage brand for the team that you're offering me, the consumer, and the experiences that you will be offering. So it goes beyond your agents, right? Uh, it, it's the home inspector people, the title people, the mortgage folks, the lawyers that you have. It's all the service oriented folks that, that you have essentially in your iPhone contact list that need to be put up front. They need to be humanized. They need to be raved about by the folks that used it. But we'll talk about why Amazon works in a second, but guys, Amazon's a verb for a reason. Let's roll with it right now. Uber right now, right now, right now, right now. And what I love about what Uber has done, even though they're, you know, uh, culturally, they're kind of, a, kind of in chaos, was Uber really did take a stand over the last four or five months when it came to, um, when it came to you know, the pandemic. Literally, in, in California right now, they're saying, if you're not going to wear a mask, uh, 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 if you're not going to wear a mask, Mr. Uber user, don't get in the car. I mean, they're standing up for things like health, right? Um, through these last four months, more than anything, what I've seen are these brands that are standing up for something. We'll talk a lot about that in a minute. But, you know, when, if Uber can do it, you guys can do it. You know, HGTV, um, it, again, and I'll, I'll hammer home <laughs> everything that I, uh, that I think about these brands. But, you know, HGTV is probably the worst thing that happened, ha has ever happened to organized real estate. You know, <laughs> they make everything look easy. But, you know, what I love about HGTV especially now is that a lot of people are dreaming about H about homes and, and community and life on HGTV, right? HGTV, HGTV is a verb and what they do really well, especially with the people that are involved is perception and reality. They are bridging it because we all know who the property brothers are, right? Do you know what they do? And you do, right? Hot guy helps you, uh, uh, buy it. The other hot guy helps you knock it down and make it look pretty. What do people think realtors do? I, I think it's something you should think about right now. I think nine out of 10 people before they engage with an agent think that all they do is open doors. Think that all they do is stick a sign in the ground. And we need to change that perception. And I'll tell you, the best agents out there right now who have thrived, because it's not only my wife, right? They have, they have made an environment where 
people want to use them rather than feeling forced to, forced to use them. And they are, they're divvying up information, making it memorable in bite-sized pieces and making reality and perception combined, right? HTTP is great. I had Zoom in there uh, for, for a big reason. Guys, you know, especially during this pandemic time, um, Zoom became a verb. And now it's like a verb for every conference call that you don't want to have anymore, right? Um, uh, yeah, we've been talking about for decades in this industry, the year of video. And this is the year of video that finally happened. And when, a good cautionary story right now is that consumers now are really, really tired of it. You know, Zoom exhaust, exhaustion, seeing people digitally is no longer a thing. Um, while it has got a lot of great uses in, uh, in real estate, we got to figure out how to, how to best use it in regards to our clients. And Zoom is one of those things that a lot of agents I talk to, they're never going to stop using. You know, they do Zoom CMAs now. They do Zoom conference calls with their clients. My wife is running a Chicago real estate business from Denver and, and her clients do not care that she's in Denver right now. They see her on Zoom. They engage with her on Zoom during the, uh, during the before and transaction period to really nail home the, the, the experience and to have that kind of face-to-face -face stuff. But it's short and it's quick and it's sweet. The qualitative aspect is amped up. Zoom has really led the way for this. Zoom and others, I should say. Uh, Zoom is really failing right now. But you know, if you're using video to, at the very least, bridge this digital gap between me, who's kind of freaked out about this COVID thing, and you as an agent, and your listings, and everything else that you're bringing to the table, revel in that. You know, this, is a, this is a great time to be in this business because if you focus on what companies like this are doing, these true disruptors, we're going to be okay. Let's stop being du uh, redundant and duplicative of every other brokerage that's out there, guys. This is one of those things where I'm going to sit down with, with my brokers in, here at Denver towards the end of the year and think about how they're going to, they can disrupt themselves uh, yearly when it comes to what these brands are doing because these brands I engage with as a consumer every day and makes me rethink what value and trust and all these words that we've used in real estate for forever makes me rethink the, the definitions and how I implement them in my life. Embrace this, guys. These are the true disruptors, and we need to think about what these brands are doing, right? Because our inability to adapt has left us abdicating to those that can, right? And, and, and adapting, and I should say, you know, I, I would say just kind of throw that word out along with disruption. I think our, we need a pivot. Learn how to pivot as an industry. You know, you, this is the time of year where you're, you guys, you know, my agents and teams and brokerages here in Denver, you know, starting to, starting to get the closings and think about what, what business next year looks like. What are you going to do to pivot? Not necessarily adapt, pivot. I'm not going to hit you over the head with, with how, how we've been unable to adapt, but Think about how we can pivot going forward. And where you're seeing true change happen, both in our industry and outside of this industry, are, are very nuanced conversations that we need to start taking note of, right? So the big thing, right? You can hem and haw all you want about the Zillow's estimate, but what we're gonna start seeing more and more of, the, of, of because we're putting so much information, not just bedrooms, price, uh, uh, square footage, you know, we're putting, a hundred pictures out here in here in Denver. We uh, we are we can put seventy five pictures of every listing on the internet. What's happening now is you're seeing technology kind of uh, be the be the advocate for the consumer and start giving them what they need. So you're seeing machine learning, basically, you know, beyond the three bed of two bath two car garage, it's machines looking at pictures, see, and seeing the fact that this house has got a nineteen eighties kitchen versus a updated 2018, 1920 kitchen. And this one is gonna make this house worth just a little more. So I'm going to, you know, in Zillow's case, make sure this estimate reflects that, right? Which you can no longer say anymore, guys, even in your market, I, I, think, it's, I think it's a non-disclosure state, but what you can no longer say anymore is, oh, it's inaccurate, they don't go into a house, because that in about five years, will not be an issue. And you're already seeing in many markets, my old market, for example, in Minneapolis and St. Paul, where not only do they put information out there, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, test marketing done 
uh, by a bunch of companies in the in Twin Cities, the, uh, these estimate is within 10% of being correct of actual sales price, guys. And it's getting better with seasonal, um, with seasonal downturns, which happen. So, you know, let's start thinking about what the estimate actually is, right? So while machine learning is helping me make better decisions on, on what I'm seeing for homes, for example, it's not just houses, by the way, it's everything else, right? Um, Think about the fact that everything online and market the fact that everything online is nothing but an advertising scheme. Google's the biggest advertising platform in the world. Zillow's the biggest real estate advertising platform in the country, right? It's ads. And when, you, and when consumers think about ads, they go, oh, wait a minute, I don't wanna be sold, right? But how you think about advertising and marketing needs to change because you're gonna see technology pick up the slack and help people make these, these better decisions, right? You keep going. On the right-hand side, guys, is a conversation. You know, hi, Ken, thanks for uh, contacting me about 181 Gay Drive, blah, blah, blah. I'd like to see this house as soon as possible. Is there any open houses today? Let me check on that. This, this whole conversation on the right-hand side, guys, is done by a robot. A robot literally is using there, there, and there correctly, guys. Um, using complete sentences, it's natural language, language, um, I think the biggest issue we're going to see as, as an industry is that this right now mindset that we have as, as consumers is going to plague real estate even more and cause all these, all these realtor safety issues that we're dealing with right now. Uh, and this is September, it's safety month. We need to start thinking about the fact that I right now can go and engage with a robot on a hotel website, on Airbnb, uh, on many brokerage websites and get interaction like this that allows for a really kind of cool customer service experience that I'm going to really kind of take for granted, right? Artificial intelligence, more than anything, is what's being integrated into, uh, into customer service, into real estate, and every other kind of service-oriented industry, right? So when we think about how we're going to be dealing with, with that as a consumer, and to, it, to me, it's, it's really simple, is bringing a human element into it. You know, you can't see a house right now. You know, how many of you guys have had a, uh, a prospective buyer sit in front of one of your listings and want to see the house house right now. And, and you're training your agents to, to, yes, pick up the phone and go. You know, it, you know I'm, I'm, I'm interviewing Carl Carter for, for DMAR in a, in a couple of weeks. This is what got his mom killed, guys. You got to stop this. We, we have what I think is one of the best foot forward that we can possibly deal with, and that's having the public trust the consumers. And if we can go in there and and say, hey, you know what? You can't see the house today because you're freaking out that my seller who's sitting in their home, frantically cleaning, trying to get their three kids into their minivan because they forgot, maybe they forgot about a showing. There is a human element to real estate. There are people in that house. I need to make sure that you're able to at least buy that home. Let's talk about this via Zoom. Let's talk about it you know, via a conference call. Come to my office. Let's get this figured out so I can get you into that house as soon as possible with my help. These are all things we need to think about when it comes to service. You are no longer in sales, guys. You're, you, we are a service industry. I, the most you're selling is you to me because I have a choice here in Denver, 7,000 agents and not even including the 5,000 on the other side of town, not including the 3,000 around the state that can help me buy and sell a home. You're, you've got to sell you and your services to me using what is happening out there when it comes to immediate customer service and acknowledgement of needs. When you think about even commercial real estate, you have companies like this taking the best of both worlds, technology and um, you know, vacant plots of land and vision and people and putting it together while taking out the middleman, which in this case are architects. This uh, Paraffin is, a, is actually an NAR reach company. If you're, if you're a resi commercial or commercial agent out there right now, check them out. But what they can do is pretty amazing. You know, what they, are, uh, what they are able to do is take open plots of land and combine it with, with floor plans that are existing online and take out the development costs, the potential development costs of things like uh, commercial real estate development, right? So you're looking at it on the left-hand side here, how much it costs for me as a business owner to research what, it could, what, what I can do in a home. Companies like Paraffin are taking information found online and putting it into their system and 
adding every single brick and mortar, uh, poten potentially brick and mortar uh, building in its spot in real time, taking development costs out of it, helping me make a better decision, doing it online so that I don't need to go and, and, and sit with a bunch of five other people who are just gonna try to sell me their services. This is what Paraffin's doing. While also taking into account the human element. What do I need to get out of the building in order to make money? This is amazing, guys, right? And this is the stuff that you need to be watching. More than the Zillows of the world, more than the, you know, the compasses of the world, let's not worry about them. Let's think about what these folks who are thinking completely outside the box are, are doing to bring service people and common sense dollars into the equation. This is where real estate can thrive, folks, if we think about the nexus point of people, service, and product right now. Product at the end of the day is not just you, but everything that you bring to the table to make the client experience better. These guys are just doing it commercial real estate. They're making a, a lot of headway now in a, bunch of, uh, in a bunch of markets where opportunity zones, for example, are a thing. It's something we need to start thinking about right now because companies like this will change the game. Which is why, when we think about these trends, as we go back to real estate, Let's start thinking about what we can do to adapt to the, to the trends that are driving the changes out there, right? So, you know, let's, let's look at what's happening out there. This is a buddy of mine taking a picture at a Post Malone concert in Chicago. Uh, when I was a kid, and when many of you guys were a kid, you used to hold up your freaking lighters to listen to Freebird, right? <laughs> this is not the case anymore. This is 20,000 people holding their cell phones up as a singer sings. I mean, this is just nuts. We live in a very mobile world, guys. Uh, to me, the biggest thing we need to start thinking about is how you convey value, trust, um, and, and, and everything else that we've been talking about real estate through a two-inch, three-inch screen. And when you think about that, it's, it's, it's more about consistency, simplicity, usefulness, um, you know, don't explain. You no longer need to write 3,000-word novellas to show off value, it really is about a picture and a couple of sentences to show value consistently. For me, who's gonna use my phone as the portal to my world, even when I'm sitting there at a concert, at a Post Malone concert, 20,000 of us, instead of holding up a light or we're holding up our phones. This is a very mobile world, guys. And almost everything on re in real estate is done via mobile. I should say mobile, it's not app driven. Apps. You know, if your app doesn't do something, um, don't worry about it. And, and frankly, I don't need your app to look at houses anymore. Now, the best real estate apps I've ever seen uh, go beyond search. They do things like, you know, signing a lease agreement, you know, through DocuSign. It, 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 what they can do is, is pretty cool, right? I don't need you for search. I don't need your app for search. And if you have an app, you better start getting to me way beforehand, right? Um, last year, actually, no, two years ago, 2018. 10 million of your kids watched a virtual concert on Fortnite. This year, or this last year in 2019, that went up to 45 million. Virtual experiences, if they're memorable, if they're fun, if they're useful, if I can get away from it all, man, our thing. Uh, uh, and we got to remember things like, you know, Fortnite. If you don't know what I'm talking about, by, by, by the way, just talk to your kids. It's a video. It's a freaking video game. But it's an immersive world where people can go in and shoot each other up, but then go watch these virtual concerts. 45 million kids, guys, around the world. To me, the lesson is, is, is do not think that somebody who's looking at Rally Real Estate is going to be just in North Carolina. They are going to be from everywhere, especially in your market. Because you not only do you have you know, fantastic opportunities as, as somebody who is looking to move there, right? But it's, it's, it's colleges, it's lifestyle, everything I wanted is there. How you convey that to me before I see it in the real world is going to be virtually now. So, you know, learn a lot from this stuff. And if you don't like, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go talk to your kids and ask if they saw this stuff. It, it, it was fascinating talking to a 10 year old who I didn't even know can, can do this stuff, but was going online and seeing these concerts. And they knew who the, the concert person, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the musician was, um, and turned around and bought music in the real world, which is fascinating when you think about it. The, the bridge between virtual and real world now has become so close because of the fact our phones are supercomputers. They can do a lot of stuff, right?
it was, we get closer and closer to kind of actual business processes. Look, look at what Apple did over the last couple of years. Um, I don't think you can do it anymore now, but I could actually apply for an Apple funded credit card through Goldman Sachs uh, through my phone. And because my phone had, knows so much about me, um, it, it was pretty immediate uh, on getting approved or not approved. Guys, there are about 100 million people around the world that have a phone. I think they're about uh, the credit card age, uh, uh, credit card acceptance age in this country led to about 45 million, uh, uh, 75 million people able to look at a credit card and apply for one seamlessly through their phone. Portal is of the world is my phone. So when you think about like this, a credit card that's pretty dang cool that doesn't exist in the real world if unless I want it to, it makes things like Quicken apps, $7 billion worth of loans were funded through Quicken, the Quicken's Rocket app in 2017, their second year in existence, guys. This is the reason why you're seeing more and more of these people use this stuff. So, you know, mobile apps, we're gonna have to start thinking about how we're going to wean people off of technology and into the real world sooner. And what COVID especially uh, aggravated was the fact that more and more people are dreaming on their phones now with brands than any, anywhere else. So when you think about your brand, can I Google your brand on, on my phone? Can I see your good website, your good website on my phone? Can, are you conveying trust and value well on a two inch screen? How commerce is going to start, uh, has, uh, is going to start in real estate, is gonna be through your phone because it already has almost everywhere else, right? What are you doing to humanize your, yourselves and your agents, your team leaders, and everyone else to get, to get business in a two-inch screen world? Something to think about, guys, especially as more and more of us spend more time on these things. But I'll ask, you know, what I love about the fact that, um, uh, about this digital world is that it really isn't going to duplicate the, the real world. Um, but what it's doing is allowing me as a consumer to go and choose how and where and when I'm going to interact with the real world, which is what we're already seeing now. It's only going to be uh, uh, aggravated even, even more so as this mobile world becomes a thing we have to deal with. Guys, for the last, what, 10, 15 years, Amazon has destroyed bookstores, and now they're building bookstores. Not only are they building bookstores, they're building grocery stores. They're building, uh, they're building uh, all-in-one shops that have an, have an offline experience that matches the online experience that they are offering. Go to an Apple, uh, App, uh, Amazon bookstore if you ever get a chance because it really does uh, look and feel like I, I, I look, look like the online world and I want to be there more than anything. And, and how I'm able to, to buy things, you know, I can scan it and buy it with my phone. I can scan it, uh, I can use cash and buy it today or I can scan it and get the book delivered to me in, a, in 24 hours. Now, I used to live in Chicago. This is the Chicago's um, um, uh, Amazon bookstore. It's beautiful, guys, right? So the offline experience and the online experience needs to match. Is it, are you useful online? Yeah, great. You better be just as useful offline. Will you, uh, if I'm not ready to buy or sell today, drive me back to a high quality experience online? This is what we're gonna be seeing a lot of in real estate. It's online to offline and online to offline back again over and over again until I'm ready to buy or sell as a, as a consumer. Is that experience the exact same? And, and guys, you know, revel in this because we're gonna win if we think about how we can bridge that gap and get people in the real world sooner, right? And more than anything, what you're seeing now is, is consumers are getting older, right? And they're staying in their homes longer. So this is NAR stats, upper left-hand corner, what you're seeing is um, the amount of time people are spending in their homes, uh, based on the NAR data that's out there. This is from 2018. In 2019, it was updated to 10 years. So um, do you have a 10-year plan for that seller who's sitting on a lot of equity um, to engage with them consistently until they're ready to use you? 10 years. Guys, my wife in Chicago has an has a eight-year plan for you after the transaction. You're going to get high-quality information and experiences after the transaction, which is where we are really missing the boat generally speaking as an industry. You know, nail the, uh, nail the post-transaction experience because for 10 years, it's not about waiting for 10 years to get that person to, to sell with you again. It's engaging with them to get them every year to give you their friends and their family who are ready today. In general, buyers are getting older. 
like you see the you can see the uh, the chart there. You know, all buyers now are 46 years old. That, that's amazing when you think about it. First time home buyers now, because real estate is so expensive, uh, they're not making any more money now than they were 10 years ago. It's taking longer to save. It's taking longer and longer for these people to turn around and buy a home. And frankly, they're putting it off. Right? Embrace that as well. Again, this is an opportunity to get to get their friends and their family who are ready today by engaging with these influencers daily. First time buyers are 32. Uh, a couple of years ago, they were 28. So as, as you can see where uh, our buyers, they're getting older. This is no longer a conversation about, you know, millennials versus Gen X, Gen Ys, and Gen Z. You know, I think Chanel, we, we talked about this. Um, guys, we've been talking about millennials since they were like, since they were like 20 and they were like unicorns. They got old and now we're talking about their kids. Let's just do something, guys, to engage with these people. In my mind, guys, you've got two sets of clients and that's it. You got connected and disconnected. I don't care how old or young they are. You need to build trust with people online or offline. That's it. And the disconnected folks, you're seeing more and more young people disconnect. And you're, that's why you're seeing more and more uh, of our kids not be on Facebook. They're on TikTok and they're building up walls around their friends and their family. There are reasons for this. We'll talk about that in a minute. But at the end of the day, this is what you need to start thinking about. Connected versus disconnected. We've been talking about millennials like they were unicorns. We got to stop that, right? Because here are more stats. This is Google and NAR, right? Half of all people started six to 12 months before they closed, right? And this is directly related to affordability. So you guys are just like Chicago and, and parts of Denver here. It might take a year for somebody to start their initial search and to close a home. Do you have a plan for that? This is where adaptability needs to come into play. From, from the point that they're, okay, they've searched and they're ready to go, it could take up to 10 weeks for these people to reach out to your agents. So at the very least, if you don't have that one year plan for warm leads, you need to have a 10 week plan for somebody who has visited, visited an open house of yours and may not be ready to buy or sell today. When you think about it, that's now between next year. Roll with that right now. Do you have a 10 week plan for me as a warm lead? Are your agents ready to go and interact and engage at a, qual at a highly qual qualitative level during that 10 week plan? Six, uh, six months to a year, boil down to 10 weeks. Have a plan for both, at least have one for that 10 week plan, right? And transparency, this is the big one. You know, to me, and this is, you know, luckily you guys have a really good AE who's really connected with, with national and state. Um, guys, the thing that could change everything in real estate isn't Zillow, isn't, isn't, isn't you know, you know, E this and I that. Um, this commission lawsuit to me is the thing that I'm thinking about every day because it doesn't even need to go to court in order for the industry to change. This guys is what's happening in, um, actually happened already in the Washington area, um, where they're starting to display commissions. Why? Transparency now is demanded of consumers, of us by consumers. So they are starting to put commissions, payouts of buyer's agents versus seller's agents on every public facing portion of their site. Can you deal with that transparency? Transparency is, is demanded. How are you going to react? Keep in mind guys, they are, this, 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 this commission case hasn't even made it to court. They're still fighting. And I'm being the legal department at NAR, I saw it firsthand. They're still fighting about how they're going to get to court. It doesn't need to get there. And these people have really deep pockets in order to, uh, to, to, get, uh, to get the industry there, guys. This is huge, right? But look at, like, look, at, look at how the Seattle Times talked about how the commission worked. Why are you leaving it up to media to let consumers know how the commission works? We are the last commission-based business. We're in a time of $1,000 cell phones. And when you market to a buyer, hey, my services to you are free, the first thing I think about is, what's the catch? I'm used to spending $1,000 on a phone, remember, right? Talk about the commission. Be transparent about this stuff. They tried this in RA Colorado here in, in, um, here in Denver and the brokers melted down because they were uncomfortable with that type of transparency. But at the end of the day, guys, consumers really don't care about how much you make. They know you make a lot because you market it. What they care about is how much they're paying and they want to see how it's divvied up. That's something to think about as we move forward. Transparency. How are you going to be transparent going forward with your buyers and your sellers, right? Redfin did it, Windermere and Cobalt Bank Bain, two of the largest brokerages in the Pacific Northwest decided to go, decided to go very transparent with how much they're paying out. 
get ahead of this, guys. We have to, as an industry, we just have to be transparent. At the end of the day, we should be standing up for how, how for what we make, because we frankly don't make a lot, uh, considering all the work that goes into housing, right? And when I'm sitting there dreaming, let's let's think about that lawsuit, right? There are 23 million Google search returns on this on this real estate commission lawsuit. But when it comes to things like professionalism in this business, there are only 10 million and almost all of it has nothing to do with realtors. So when we think about professionalism, guys, let's start, let's start making things matter. I think that's a really good opportunity for us as well. Let's make this stuff matter. And you as broker owners need to start hiring and attracting more professional agents. Let's all stop trying to hire people who have been told I've got a personality for sales. Bring in entrepreneurs, bring in people who are service oriented, bring in people who don't have commission breath 24 seven. This is one of the toughest things as recruiters. It's a shift into an attraction mode for business. You should be fending off people rather than trying to get every, everyone and their mother to be a realtor in your brokerage. And then more than anything, get the best out of the existing agents that you've got, no matter how big or small you are, okay? So how do we get there, right? To me, these are these small pivots we need to think about. What does my brand stand for? And you need to ask this every day, right? And if you don't know, first thing you should do is engage with your previous clients and ask them, you had a choice, why'd you use me? So, you know, if you have something to stand on beyond sales, let's start thinking about that, right? Because as you're seeing, as consumer sentiment changes, you're seeing two thirds of all people see it as important or somewhat, uh, somewhat important when it comes to uh, when it comes to brands. Now, an extreme case is this, right? Know who your clients are because, guys, Nike did. I remember hearing all about all this, like, oh, why, why is Colin Kaepernick out there being part of this? You got so many football players and other people that have gave their lives to, you know what? Nike knew who their people were, right? You think about the overall kind of issues that we're, we're talking about here, the societal issues, addressing it, you know, what's happening around the country, you know, uh, as an industry, we are grappling with it because affordable housing now has become a thing. But when it comes to things like just who, you, who do you stand up for? It's not just about buyers and sellers of today. It's buyers and sellers of tomorrow as well. Think beyond today, like what Nike did, because Nike made $6 billion off of Colin Kaepernick putting him at the center of all, uh, all their ad campaigns, which is an interesting thing to see. Now, look at what's happening right now. Again, an extreme case. Black Lives Matters, right? It's interesting seeing how that, uh, how that brand is integrated into everyday life because it's been around for about five years. You would never, never have seen the NBA, the NFL, uh, all these kind of high profile brands, um, uh, both big and small, stand up for that uh, only until now when it looked like these big brands were out of touch with the majority of consumers. You know, I don't care about your politics, but think about, you know, how you're going to stand up for what community is, what buyers and sellers want and need. You know, think and act like how Nike did and all these big brands are working now and how that's going to matter in real estate and self-select, frankly. If you, if half of these people we aren't going to use you anyways if they realize that you don't jive with them ideologically. And that's okay, right? They self-select and don't waste your time on the front end. It's a cool thing. At the very least, guys, rest on this. Realtors solve a hell of a lot of problems. The problem that we have as an industry is that we don't do a really uh, do a good job of showing off the problems that we do solve. That opening up a door to a house now is no longer a problem. I have got an e-lock on the front of, uh, of my door. I can let anybody in I want uh, with the push of an app on my uh, a button on my app. What do you do beyond that? If you stand up for at the very least consumers, you better let consumers know and make it matter to me beforehand. I love this quote by Elon Musk, print this thing out, stick it up on top of your, your marketing team's um, marketing team's computers. Think about it from your leadership perspective. Think about the problems that you solve right now because they are the most pro-consumer thing that we can do. We are the last pro-consumer element of this, real, of, of this industry. In your marketing, kill the crap that you have been using since 1995. It's literally been the same stuff over and over again. And if you can get people offline in a fundamentally good way, um, in a fundamentally streamlined way, we're good. And the best way to do it is to think about simple, useful, and compelling stories that let others engage with it. Basically, shut up. You need to stop talking as an industry. We, we just are so explaining with our value. We use 3,000 words and pictures and derivative 
language, it doesn't matter anymore. You know, your job now is to, is to do things and to create content and to create actions that make people wanna rave about you. And here's a really good example of that, right? Over the last couple of years, I had people who had never stepped into a Popeye's chicken shop before want to get a Popeye's chicken sandwich because so many of their friends and family were raving about it on their social media, they're on their text messages. What are you doing right now to get people to want to rave about you? Look at White Claw. They led this, this charge of these seltzer alcoholic drinks that are supposed to be better for me to the point where they're like memes and slogans and sayings that are uttered by me, not by them. What are you doing right now to get people to want to rave about you? And these are the things you need to start thinking about when it comes to your marketing, because marketing, man, it needs to change. I mean, if I go right now and look at uh, search for power cords for my phone on Amazon, look how much information I get. I get everybody and their mother opining. I get every single piece of information known to man about these cords. This is for a $35 cord, guys. $35 should be about two, uh, two bucks, by the way, right? What? It takes so many, so many, I mean, you're helping with the biggest financial transaction of my life. I need more than three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage. I need more than get a mortgage. I need more than go find a lawyer. This is, this is stuff you need to start thinking about, right? So useful, compelling, um, memorable marketing is huge because again, these are stats. The amount of information people need to make a decision, 10.7. Local search on real estate, 256%, which means by the way, the micro markets in your market that you need to talk about. So it's every neighborhood that's out there. This is where uh, the, the really good agents and team leaders and brokerages I know are really killing it while also talking about the niches. Why, why should you use me? Half of all people hated your site. That's for Google. We talked to 200,000 people and 120,000 hated brokerage websites because of their lack of customization. 41% still had no idea which agent they were gonna use after looking at your site. Guys, these are stats you need to roll with right now. Be, be indicative of your market. Give people information that they want to come back to and read over and over again. Have some measure of customization that I'm able to do on your, uh, on your site, site, not app, okay? And at least, at the very least, make sure your agents have a picture of them today, not from 1995, on your site while talking about why they should use it use them. What are they good at? What are their specialties? People want to know. It's no longer uh, okay to be a generalization of real estate anymore because everyone else is generalized. Be a specialist in something. At the brokerage level, what's awesome is that you got enough people, you can have any number of specialties that I as a consumer can engage with. What isn't marketing is this. What you should be marketing is, is how much work and time it took for me to sell the house in one day. It takes my wife 90 hours to get a house ready to sell in a day. And she goes and tells it on her site. She illustrates it on her emails, right? Rubble with that. Clear, simple, and obvious. This is a company that's, uh, I think it's giving you guys a little bit of heartburn here in, in Denver as well. But guys, look at how they market. Sell your home from the comfort of your couch. Enter your home address and get an instant offer. We're help, here to help sell no matter what. And we're talking about pivots. What these guys turned around and did was, was, was in, integrate traditional real estate services into their whole ecosystem. Simple, clear, obvious, 600,000 offers requested. Show off the results. Put, use your site for that. No one cares about search anymore, guys, right? How a brokerage has done it. This is a buddy of mine out in Hawaii, uh, the hawaiilife.com guys, they have their own TV show. But one of the things that you have to do if you're an agent of theirs, if you sell 5 million or 500 million in real estate, which they do have, you need to go and share your expertise online. And these guys talk about it. They've created culture. They've created a unit of agents that believe in not only the, their personal brands, but how the company brand amplifies it. And they talk about what they're good at. This is BurlingameProperties.com. People focus real estate. You haven't lived, guys, until you have 5,000 agents and realtors in your neighborhood, not city, not association, your neighborhood. We're selling 100 houses in a year is like, that's, that's it, 100 period. This is also a neighborhood. We're selling 25 to 30 as top producer, right? So when you're thinking about like how you stand out, people focus real estate. Raziel Unger has his clients share their stories on why they used him, what the journey was like buying a home. 
this is incredible stuff when you think about the work that goes involved with it. Remember, you know, people don't know what agency is. This is the guy that's standing out. And if you engage your clients on, on what their friends and family need, like what, what one of their friends and family needed from, uh, from, from Raziel's site, there wasn't enough Chinese speaking websites out there. So Raziel, uh, uh, one of Raziel's clients asked him to translate his website in Chinese for free. Burlingameproperties.com, hawaiilife.com. This is, this is proof of concept that illuminating people with useful content, compelling content, memorable content that's brought forth by consumers works, guys. It works. Because this is what we're seeing right now. This is active conversations on Facebook about the, the transaction. I don't need your agent for this because I can do it myself, right? Uh, this should scare the living daylights out of you. And it's not just online, guys. It's offline as well. Sold AF. And for those of you guys who need the Urban Dictionary to know what AF means, it's sold as F word, which is millennial slang, right? Stop that. You, you got to knock that off. This is East Nashville, 25,000 people in the East Nashville Facebook group, where East Nashville has gone from being very affordable to not very affordable inside, inside 10 years. This is a house that sold for a million dollars. Get some class. This is a consumer taking a yard sign and making it a viral sensation online. We need to start thinking about not only what we're offering, but what our agents are bringing to the table as well, along with our collective offerings as a brokerage. Guys, this is the stuff we're dealing with. We have to stop this. And if you're hiring these people, fire them immediately. Please, for, for everyone's sake, these people are ruining it for the rest of us, okay? Talk about processes real quick. Um, better make them easier for me, not for you. And this is where I'm seeing a lot of in, in, um, in, uh, in brokerage, tech brokerage ops. And you know, everything about what's happening within the system is to make your life easier and that's gotta really stop. Because if it's making life easier for me, it's gonna make life easier for you. So make sure your CRM, make sure all your tech is in there. This is probably one of the toughest ways, the second toughest ways to adapt into kind of this changing uh, business environment. Here's a really good example of that, right? So when I moved here to, uh, to, uh, to Denver, I sold one of my cars, right? I, uh, my, former wife's, my wife's former realtor car, I turned around and sold. And I, and I went and I did my due diligence as a consumer. I, I talked to two, uh, I talked to an Acura dealer. I talked to a company like CarMax. Um, I talked to a, a, just a reseller. And then I went to Carvana. And uh, what's, what was interesting is on, on all four, places, I got the exact, almost the exact same price, probably about $100, uh, up to $500 of, of variance. Um, Carvana, guys, is nothing but a, um, a car dealership without the brick and mortar. And what they turned around after talking to a friend of mine that actually works for them is that they are essentially a car dealership, but their, their showroom is online. They bought my car for the exact same dollar amount that I could have gotten anywhere else, except for they saved me the trip of, a, of driving the car anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour away to sell it. They brought that nice uh, roving billboard to the front of my home. They picked up my car, gave me a check. Almost all the work was done online. The real world interaction was quick and easy. Customer service was number one on their, on their, um, on their uh, priority list for their interaction with me. And the beauty about this was that as this Carvana guy left, five of my neighbors came out because they only pick up a car during, um, uh, during times when, when I'm at home, right? Um, all my neighbors came out and asked me about my experience. They, they made the same amount of money that all the other car dealerships did minus the, uh, 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 minus the interaction, minus the whole kind of tedious interaction with me offline. This is the stuff that makes people go crazy, right? because I, I love the experience and these guys made a little more money than the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the car dealerships that I talked to, a lot more depending on who I talked to. But think about your processes. Is it like this? Does the online interaction streamline in the offline interaction so that at the end of the day, I'm saving time and money because right now, technology and processes that save me, the consumer time and money will last, will be future proof, right? Because so we, we talked about it, right? Uh, we talked about what folks are looking for. Overall, there are nine billion searches last year. Ten of them done on on broker. Uh, ten of them done on, on on a myriad of websites. Ten times on ten websites, and all of it on mobile. 
almost all that Carvana interaction was done on my mobile device, which is amazing, right? So when I'm looking at, at you and I'm, you're, when I'm thinking about your brand, how are you going to compel me in the real world? That is the, the one thing that your systems and processes can do. Stop talking about how you will make it easy for me and start showing it to me in clear, simple, and obvious ways like what Carvana is doing, what Airbnb does, what Zillow does, and all these other folks, okay? And you're seeing now these brokerages go after it. And, and, and you know, Compass is one of those kind of the, the sexy topics that people talk about. But guys, these, are, these folks are using money, uh, VC money, to build solutions that make it, at least in my head, easy for me. It goes beyond search. It's all the other services that bring in Compass Concierge and all the other services that are out there in one interface, right? So let's pivot. When you think about the consumer experience, when you think about uh, what we need to do to get, it, get beyond ourselves, pivot, 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 and disrupt yourself every day, right? So what top agents, teams, and brokers are doing and thinking about right now is this. What's repeatable? What is repeatable by you and your agents? What is attracting the correct new agents into the fold? You want to attract agents with your systems and processes and, frankly, your marketing because your marketing will get you there. Is it scalable? If what, you, what you're doing today, scalable to 100 agents, 500 agents, 200 agents, uh, 2,000 agents if you want to get there because if it's scalable and malleable, your, your services will last. Is it future-proof, especially in regards to that client experience? You know, if, we're, if, if what you're centering your marketing, your business processes, your systems are, are centered on that client experience, roll with it, right? And is it, is it spanning before, during, after the transaction life cycle? And that's huge. Remember, 10-year plan after the fact. So when you're thinking about up to this point, what are you going to do for the next 10 years to matter in my life after the transaction? This is why repeatability, scalability, and future-proof actually works, right? So how I suggest you would start is think about what worked and what you learned during this post-pandemic time. And this is like, this is just stuff that my wife learned, right? More than anything, she does not care about lead generation anymore. She wants to focus on, the, on what people are going to experience before they actually reach out to, reach out to her. So, you know, my wife, she's probably, and, and many of uh, agents like her are probably your worst nightmare because she doesn't use anything the brokerage offers her. She uses everything the association offers her uh, in regards to member benefit stuff, right? So she's got a $5 NAR website that she has made this year $78 million for the real estate on, right? Because her team focuses everything onto that site to get it out uh, to consumers. And because what they want to lay, lay into that consumer is what it is that that, that person, or they're going to be promising to that consumer before they reach out. Um, the big thing is quantitative to qualitative success metrics, right? So, um, you know, instead of getting like, I, I want to spend X amount of dollars to get 10,000 leads in, guys, the word lead is just, just remove it for your lexicon. What you want are more of the warm bodies, right? So how are you going to get people in the back of your car to come out and visit you in the, at the office to go and have a Zoom meeting? I think the Zoom meeting is actually good because people are very easy with that now. If you haven't bought, by the way, um, Zoom or Google's full-on suite of services, just go ahead and do that. I, I suggest you do that right now. Um, go beyond the neighborhood or go beyond the home for anything virtual. Tell the story of the neighborhood as well. Um, social media, guys, is is done. The only people on social media now are old people yelling at each other, ask your kids, right? Uh, email and chat now are the primary communications channels when it comes to the warm to hot to in-person leads. So email and chat are huge. So it's, it's rethinking what marketing looks like uh, at that point. Premium feeling services. Um, this is where you need to like stop what you're doing uh, if you're going to go down this road and engage with your previous clients. Uh, quarterly, the top teams and agents, at the very least, are engaging with their top clients, ones that give them the most business, and ask them, uh, check in to be sure that everything is uh, meeting the expectations that they have set um, and is attracting their business, because that's, what, that's really what you want, it's a referral-based mentality. Previous sphere engagement at a high quality level is massive. Um, I don't think anybody right now, uh, any of the top agents I talk to, leads are almost secondary. They're not buying them anymore. They're spending more money on the folks who uh, have used them before to drive business from them, much more money. And, and, and my wife is spending 8% more uh, compared to what she did uh, last year. There are people that are spending 15 to 20% more on their, on, their, um, on their previous clients while cutting back any type of lead generation 
um, uh, uh, lead generation services they were using. The curation ideology and processes was the number one thing. Once I get your attention, Mr. Buyer and Seller, even if you're not ready today, I want to earn your trust until you are. So it's this idea about you know, earning mind share, earning the business, and attracting their desire to want to use you slowly but surely over the course of, in many cases, like with my wife in Chicago, where it's incredibly unaffordable there uh, due to taxes and all the other stuff, um, years, two-year plan for a, for, a warm, for a warm lead to use outdated lexicon, right? So, you know, what's, what does that look like? Here's a really good example of, of what's happening out there. These porch photos is a great way to engage with your, your Amazon style uh, vendor partners, right? Um, instead of doing any kind of the intensive movie stuff that she, she did over the last couple of years, and because people are so freaked out about the pandemic, you know, she's doing this with, it, with, a, with a photographer. It's 20 bucks for these porch photos and they're beautiful, right? And people are cooped up in their houses. They might as well make something, something beautiful uh, from it. And man, the, the amount of people, because it's so unique, because it's different, the amount of people who have not only signed up for this, but have gotten their friends and their family to sign up is absolutely amazing. So again, the memorability, simpleness, compellingness of, of marketing um, correlates to your post-transaction sphere, uh, sphere engagement as well. How you adapt to how your buyers and sellers are dealing with life now after all this COVID stuff is how you're going to shine going forward, right? And at the end of the day, this is what I, I really want you to, to nail down. What services that we offer, who we are, what we do as realtors matters. This is in the Consumer Reports Facebook group. At NAR, I was actually, I went and followed consumers everywhere they go to kind of monitor the sentiment of, of realtors everywhere. And you can kind of fill in the blanks on what brand is here. Right, but I was scared to death about the engagement this person was going to have. Fifty-one comments when I saw it, and all of it was this: "This is everything, everything that that buyers and sellers who have used you share." Right, some things they need to be kind of rethought a little bit. Right, somebody shared an online service. You know, I think the, the idea about like pencil pushers is is, is something that we need pro we need to get away with because pencil pushers, boy, uh, that's cheap now. But you know. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a home with a sign that goes up for sale by owner. And then a couple months later, a realtor sign is in its place. Use a commission, accept it, they earn it. This is a consumer talking about it. And this is my favorite commenter. Selling your own house is like taking out your own appendix. You might be successful, but you aren't as smart as you think. Buyers can be shits and unlike your anatomy, things have probably changed since the last time you did this. I love this. This, this guy told the story of what realtors do, at least in their, in their point that they engage with an agent. Our job now is to think about how people will feel uh, in this post-COVID, new normal, all these cliche words in this world that we are going to be doing, dealing real estate. It's a very unique space. It's online. It's offline. It's filled with, with other brands that will disrupt. Think about what you're going to be doing now to disrupt yourself, to make people want to think about this before they use you rather than afterwards. This is something that I'm really be concentrating on uh, here in Denver because we have so many people coming from all over the country moving here. My wife, blonde hair, blue eyed, is engaging with the the Japanese uh, contingent of people because we have a mixed uh, we have a mixed hapa kid um, with the the Japanese community here. And three of out of the four of them want to buy houses because they because they they were they wanted to rent first, fill it up, and then figure out where to buy. This world, folks, it's all about that buildup. It's about making sure that what you're doing is scalable and future-proof up, up until the point where I interact with you. It matters to me during the transaction because you've got my trust, but then after the transaction as well, right? The simplest thing we can do right now is to matter. It's to show up and be a part of what buyers and sellers want and need before they want and need them, and for us to get out of our own way and engage with these people in a fundamental way, right? It's, it's, it's really is as simple as that. Why? Because the top agents, brokers, and teams that I know have already adapted. They are already doing the things that technology can't do. They're already making their brands matter to people who don't realize that brand, action, that brand matters. So when we think about what we're going to do going forward, think less about what the person sitting next to you is going to do, because almost all of it's BS anyways, and, and focus more on why and who, right? Go beyond the brands, think about the concepts and go from there, okay? So I am out of time. I think I went a little long here, but 
if you guys have any questions, I'm game to talk about it. There's nothing in the Q and A, nothing in the uh, chat. So um, I'll happy to take questions if you got them. Oh, actually, George, George asked a question. Where do you share stuff that's not on social media? Here, here's the thing. You, you need you need to you need to sh you need to create information, content, what have you, uh, that is shareable on social media. Yeah, your job no is no longer to sit on Facebook and TikTok. Thank you for not asking me about TikTok, by the way, because your kids are going there because they want to get away from you. Um, but share information that other people want to share on on their social media. Here's a good example, right? Uh, every January, my wife automatically sends out to all of her clients and posts on her 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 web page. It's, um, uh, here are three tips to keep your pipes from freezing because January is always the coldest month. But if your pipes do freeze, here are my three favorite plumbers that will give you a 10% discount if you call them, right? And those plumbers are all on her website as well, where you can see the information, share the information. And that is every year, every year, the number one most shared uh, Facebook post, uh, web page and email that my wife puts out, right? So matter to people after the transaction. Actually, remove search and the transaction away from it. Think about your world there and, and, and roll with the things that make people wanna use it. So, hey, you know, I, I, if you guys have uh, any questions after this, usually what happens is afterwards, here's my email address. I'm kind of out there everywhere. Uh, these are fundamental uh, conversations I'm having with my brokers here. Um, as they think more about uh, what's happening outside of Denver than what's happening inside of it. Um, thank you for thank you for having me today. This is a lot of fun. Yeah.